Um, I'm going to invite you to open up your Bibles to the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1. Mark is the second book of the New Testament. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Mark, chapter 1. And it's in Mark, chapter 1, where we're going to be concentrated in. We're, we're pretty much going to spend most of our time in Mark, chapter 1. We are going to pass to Genesis, chapter 1, somewhere in the teaching, and then come back to Mark 1, in case you want to go to Genesis 1 with us. Um, we're in a new month, and I always like in the new month to start a new series. Uh, we're going to be studying uh, the Gospel of Mark over the next couple of, uh, couple of weeks, probably next two months, um, as we prepare to then go into Thanksgiving and then Christmas and New Year's. It's crazy how all of that is just around the corner, um, and, and it'll be here before we know it, right? Super fast. Um, let's, let's read Mark chapter 1, verse 1. It says, This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. I'm, I'm sorry. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written... Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized, and to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to, forgive, to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River, verse 6. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. Mm, sounds delicious. Maybe because I'm hungry. Verse 7. <laughs> John announced, someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Verse 9. One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him at the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water... He saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. Let's go back to verse 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 1. Let's read the first three verses together. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began... Just as the prophet Isaiah had written, Look, I'm sending my messengers ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. Three. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. Here in these uh, first three verses, um, if, um, if you study the Gospel of Mark, you'll see that Mark is a short uh, gospel, shorter than the rest. And it's fast, man. Like, like Mark just, boom, he jumps into action. Uh, they, some people call it the gospel of action, right? And, and Mark, in the first three verses, he shows us these titles that help us have a better understanding of who Jesus is. And it's important that we would understand these titles. Verse 3 starts off by saying, I mean, verse 1 starts off by saying, this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah. Some of your Bibles, instead of Messiah, has the word Christ, Jesus the Christ. In Spanish, if you're following along with the Spanish Bible, Reina Valera 1960, which is the one we normally use, um, it says Jesucristo, right? Cristo, Christ. And then there's a term that we hear all the time. Now, we have to remember that the New Testament, Mark, was originally written in Greek. The Old Testament was originally written in um, Hebrew. And so Christ is sort of the Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah. In this translation that I'm using, the New Living Translation, they just went ahead and jumped us to Messiah so we could feel it tied from the Old Testament all the way to New Testament. But Christ and Messiah it means the same thing, right? So what does Christ mean? Um, you know, it's kind of like whenever I ask someone, like, uh, uh, what does forgiveness mean? And then they'll reply in Spanish, perdón. I'm like, well, thank you for translating it. But I didn't ask you, how do you translate it? I say, what does it mean, right? You know, and uh, so what does Christ mean? You may translate it and say, the Messiah, bro. Thank you, you know, for that. 
But actually, what Christ or the Messiah means, it means the anointed. It means anointed one. When we say Jesus Christ, Jesus means Savior. We're saying the anointed Savior, right? The anointed one. Now, in the Old Testament, there were three groups of people that were anointed, right? The, the first group that was anointed were the priests, right? Aaron and his descendants, they were all anointed. From the high priest down, they were all anointed. It was part of being a priest. They were anointed with oil. And the priests were the leaders in all spiritual matters. If it had to do with God, had to do with heaven, had to do with spiritual sense, the priests, they were the leaders. Right? The other group that was anointed were the prophets. The prophets were anointed. And, and the prophets represent the voice of God, right? Or another way of saying it is the word of God. Right? So we have the, the priests and we have the prophets. And then the third group that was anointed were the kings. And if you read the story of King David, you'll see that David was actually anointed three times. One time by the prophet Samuel, a second time when he was anointed king over Judah, and then a third time when he was anointed king over all of Israel. Right? So who were anointed? The, the priests, the prophets, and the kings, right? Now, what does this have to do with Jesus? Because Jesus, the Messiah, or Jesus Christ, right? Christmas, Christ. Uh, what does it have to do with Jesus? Well, Jesus is not just priest, but he is our high priest. When it comes to all spiritual matters, Jesus represents us, right? Jesus is our leader in all spirits. Not Pastor Reuben, not, 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 not your church, not a denomination. No, Jesus Christ, he is our leader in all spiritual matters. It has to do with heaven, has to do with afterlife, has to do with eternal life. Jesus is who we go to, right? Jesus is, uh, uh, was a prophet. He, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I'll, I'll raise it up, right? John describes Jesus as the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, speaking of Jesus. So Jesus is like the voice of God, the Word of God. And then the kings, and you've heard this before, when we praise Him and worship Him, we'll say Jesus is Lord of Lord, King of Kings, right? So Jesus is not only our leader in all heavenly matters, spiritual matters, but He's also our leader in all earthly matters, whatever has to do with life, like Jesus, Jesus is Lord. He, he's our master, right? So that, that's the first title that we see is the title Christ, right? The second title that John gives us in these three verses, we find it in verse one. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God, right? So Jesus is the son of God. Now, what does it mean that Jesus is the son of God, right? Uh, if I ask, I'm not asking, so you don't have to raise your hand. But if I was asking uh, who here is a child of God, uh, we all would raise our hand, right? right well, see, I wasn't even asking it when we all rose our hand. We were just like, yeah, I'm a son of God, right? You know, I'm a daughter of God. I'm a child of God. Get back, Satan. You know, I'm a child of God, right? You know? <laughs> but when Jesus would say that he was the son of God, he was saying a little bit different. Uh, recently, I'm, re I'm reading this book, and it wasn't even in preparation for my teaching, um, but in, in this book, it talks about that when they study um, uh, the Hebrew writings of 2,000 years ago, the days of Jesus, when Mark is writing his gospel, when they study like what the rabbis and the, and the priests and the high priests were writing, there's very, very, very little reference to God as Abba, right? Abba, Abba God, Abba Father, uh, Abba Padre. There, Abba means Father. There's very little reference. So Jesus comes around, and it's pretty radical for him to start talking about God, uh, as in Abba, teach us to pray. When you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, right? It's, it was pretty radical for Jesus to come and just start talking about God like, like yeah, the, oh yeah, my dad? You know, basically is what Jesus was saying, like, oh, you mean my dad, right? And, and talking about, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm the son, right? I, I'm the son. Like when people come and they'll say like, um, or, or, I need to speak to the pastor. And then um, I, I, when my, my dad and I would co-pastor, I would say, well, I'm the pastor. And they would be like, no, 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 the other one. I'm like, my dad, right? You know, like that. And, the, and then and they're like, yeah. Or they would say like, hey, where's the pastor? And I'm like, I'm the pastor. I'm the son. And they're like, oh, okay, right? And not that being the son made me the pastor, but I was pastoring with him, right? But people would get us confused. And so Jesus, he's walking around. He's talking about Abba, right? Now, look. This is how we know that when he was saying it, it was serious, a different level than how when we say, I'm a child of God. Because the Gospel of John says 
that when Jesus referred to God as his father, when Jesus referred to being the son of God, it says that they wanted to kill him. They conspired to kill him because by saying he was the son of God, he made himself equal to God. And being how there's only one God, when Jesus says the Son of God, he's saying, I'm God, right? He's saying, I'm God, right? There's important stuff that we learn here, right? Now, verse 3, we find the third title that Mark gives us for Jesus. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, right? Lord, right? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, if you would confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in his resurrection, you shall be saved, right? Uh, so, Lord, what does it mean when we say Jesus is Lord, right? Um, we, we often use the term like servant. I'm a servant of God. I, I have a friend of mine. He has a clothing line, and his clothing line is called Siervos, right? And every once in a while, and he's, he's like one of those real loud, rowdy type of people. And every once in a while when, I, when we talk, um, if I call him on the phone or a human person, he'll be like, ¿Qué onda, siervo? You know, like that. And I'm all like, siervo. You know, like that. And we say, servo de Dios, varón de Dios, servo de Dios, right? Servant of God, right? He's a servant. But actually, if Jesus is Lord, Lord means owner, right? That's what Lord means. It means master, means owner. And so if Jesus is Lord, if I say Jesus is Lord of my life, what I'm saying is that I belong to Jesus, right? A, a servant serves and goes home. A slave serves and stays, right? We're actually slaves to Jesus. Uh, Colossians says it this way. Everything was created through him for him. Jesus owns everything. Everything was created through him for him. All right. You belong to Jesus. Right. Next time your kids are acting up, be like, I don't care. You belong to Jesus. Right. Like that. Next time your, your husband, your wife's giving you a hard time, be like, you belong to Jesus. Do the let You stop any argument like that. Ah, oh, I know you belong to Jesus. Right. You'll stop an argument right there. Stop them in their tracks. Right. You know, man, you were bought at a high price. You were expensive too. You belong to Jesus. Jesus bought you and he paid a high price. He didn't use silver or gold. He didn't use uh, Benjamins. He didn't use dollars. No, he bought you at the price of his blood. He shed his blood to redeem you and purchase you for your heavenly father. You belong to Jesus, all right? You belong to Jesus. That's what it means when we say that Jesus is Lord. Okay, let's go to verse 9. Verse 9 says, One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. Let, let, let me, I'm, I'm gonna throw a little softball at you guys, all right? This is not, this is not complicated. Don't think too hard. You think too hard, you're gonna mess up. All right, this is a little, just a little softball. Jesus is being baptized, and as he's being baptized, coming out of the waters, there's a voice from heaven. Jesus is in the waters. There's a voice from heaven that says, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. Who, who spoke? The Father. All right, thank you. The Father. The Father. Right. There's an interesting thing about these three verses that we just read, the baptism of Jesus, verse 9, 10, and 11. It runs like a parallel to creation, right, to creation. We're going to come back to Mark chapter 1. If you want to follow along, follow me to Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. You shouldn't spend too much time looking for it. If you're reading the index of where to find Genesis, you went too far. Just come up. All right, Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1 says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Okay. There's this parallel between creation, Genesis chapter 1, in the first few verses, and the baptism of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, that initiates his ministry, right? We see in the baptism of Jesus, we saw Jesus, we saw the Holy Spirit descending, and then we heard God speaking, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In creation, we see God, in the beginning, God created, that was verse one, right? The heavens and the earth, right? 
And then verse 2 says, The earth was formless and empty, and the darkness covered the deep, and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was hovering over the surface of waters. Now this, this hovering over, um, I, I was uh, reading something that said that, that oftentimes, like, like some commentators, they used to add, um, and the Spirit of God was hovering, in parentheses, like a dove over the surface of the water. Another way of translating is that it was fluttering over the waters, right? Just like the Holy Spirit, remember Je that Jesus saw it coming down, they saw it as descending as a dove upon Jesus, right? And so it's this Holy Spirit, just like there in creation. And then, and then notice what it says, hovering over the surface of the waters. Jesus was being baptized in the river Jordan, the waters. Okay? So we see the Father, we see the Holy Spirit, both in creation, both in baptism. And then uh, we see Jesus, right? So Jesus being baptized. Here, verse 3 says, Then God said, so the word comes out of God, let there be light, and there was light. Right? God spoke. John says this in his gospel. He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? So when God speaks, right there, that's, that's Jesus in action. Colossians, again, says everything was created through him, for him. Right? John says that everything that was created wouldn't have been created without him. Right? So there in creation, we see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then we see in the baptism of Jesus, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? And so we see this parallel running. There's a doctrine that we believe in, and there's a doctrine that we believe in here at La Iglesia del Pueblo, Pueblo's Church, and we teach. It's called the doctrine of the, Holy, uh, the, doctrine of the Trinity, right? Doctrine of the Trinity. ¿Qué es eso, Pastor? Well, Trinity, you just add a little bit of salt, lemon, Tabasco. No, no, it's algo que se come. No, I'm just kidding. The Trinity, la Trinidad. What, what's the Trinity? I'm going to tell you that when we first moved to this sanctuary um, back in the mid-90s, right here where CVS is, there was a little gas station. It was a Chevron. Anybody here remember there was a Chevron right there where CVS is at? Yes, thank you, man. I know everybody's like, oh, Pastor, always making up. I ain't making up nothing, right? And so... Uh, you know, around that time, I was a senior graduating high school, and I, 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 I had just graduated high school, and I was driving. I thought I was real cool. You know, I would drive to church by myself and drive home, you know, by myself. We literally live two blocks from here. Literally, it's like three blocks max, like, like three minutes, you know, but still, I was cool. And I used to stop at that Chevron after service, pretty much after every service, and buy a Dr. Pepper and a Snickers or a Dr. Pepper and, and some uh, Hostess cupcakes. I remember we're talking about, you know, I was, I was like 18, 19 years old, maybe 20, early 20s, you know, where you could do stuff like that, you know. <laughs> you get to my age, you can't do stuff like that anymore, you know. There's maybe a, a Snickers every six months and then the Dr. Pepper the other six months, right? But in those days, man, it could be like every day, every night, you know, same time as Snickers and, and, and still go to sleep and not be like, oh, God, like, no, 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 that, right? Just, you know, go to sleep out. Anyways. And I remember I walked in, and there was two people in the store. It's a little store. It's a little Chevron, right? And they had a little convenience store inside, and there were two, two people in there. There was the guy working the counter. Uh, I, I, I think, I think, I'm not trying to be stereotypical here or racist, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was like Pakistani. He was Muslim. And then there was a man wearing a blazer like mine, but instead of blue, red. And, and I recognized immediately that he was from the Salvation Army. He was a minister from the Salvation Army. And I'll never forget, I walked in, and it's a little store. So in the time that I walked in, you know, grab that coat, grab that Dr. Pepper, grab that Snickers, put it on the counter, boom, pay, walk out. This was the conversation. Like, this is the conversation. Is I hear the, 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 the uh, guy behind the counter saying, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. How can three be one and one be three? I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. And I remember walking out and that's all I heard was, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. How can three be one and one be three? I don't get it. Man, let, let me tell you, I, I've, I've been preaching for over 20 years and I still don't get it. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're finite. God is infinite. <laughs> I mean, me trying to understand exactly how God is, is like an ant in your kitchen wondering why you're adding seasoning to the fajitas. <laughs> it's just like that. I mean, I barely pass algebra. You know what I'm saying? 
But let me tell you, part of the doctrine of the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is that the first thing I want to say is that we believe in one God. All right? One God. It's one God. Now, this God has revealed himself in three persons, three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that all three are eternal. All, right? all three are eternal. All three have existed for all of eternity. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have existed right, for all of eternity. And these three, right, listen up, these three love each other and glorify each other. Right? The Father loves the Son and loves the Spirit and glorifies the Son and the Spirit. The Son loves the Father and loves the Spirit and glorifies the Father and the Spirit. And the Spirit loves the Father, loves the Son, and glorifies the Father and the Son. All three have existed for all of eternity. All three love each other, and all three glorify each other. Okay. I remember, I was, I was just remembering it two services ago, that uh, one time, you know, one of my family members, you know, he was like, man, I know more Bible verses than you do by memory. Back in the day when we used to memorize Bible, right? Ahora lo tenemos en el app, ya pa' qué, right? And um, he says, uh, I'm like, all right, man. And so he just kept messing with me. I'm like, all right, let's do this, Brutus. And so uh, he threw out one Bible verse, so I threw out the classic Jesus wept, right? You know, because it's short and had that one right there. Boom, that's like my little derringer. Pulled it out real fast, right? Like that. And then so he threw out another one. So, so man, I was, I was sweating. So I'm like, Jesus wept. Hey, orar sin cesar, right? You know, pray without ceasing, right? You know, so I threw, threw out another short one right there, you know, a uh, little, little pocket knife. I, my EDC I had in my back pocket, threw it out at him, right? Those of you who came last week know what I'm talking about, EDC. And so they threw out another one. And um, so then I was like, man, what, what am I going to do? So I started quoting all of Psalms 121 because my mom, she used to make us say Psalm 121 every time we'd go out of town. And they're like, oh, that's not fair because he knew. He's like, that's not fair. Como, como que no? Each one is a verse, right? And like that, it counts. And like that. So needless to say, I won. But one of the verses in there somewhere, man, I threw out there. God is love. My mom, she always, you know, Dios es amor. My mom, she always laughs at my dad that when he first got saved, because she, she knew of the Lord before my dad. My dad didn't know nothing about God. And that one time they were in church, and in those days, those small churches, like the pastor would say, all right, anybody want to give a verse by memory? And people would stand up and throw a verse, you know, like that. Everybody, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And so my dad raises his hand, man, all, all drunk and high, and he's all raising his hand, trying to make him put his hand down. And then he's all like, Dios es amor y nada me faltará, right? You know, like he combined two verses, right? You know, God is love and I shall not want, which is the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Nombre los junto allí, right? And my mom, cuyote, my mom says she's all embarrassed like this guy right here, you know? He's trying to impress her, you know, like I guess, you know. It worked. They got married three kids later. Here I am, right? You know, it must have worked, right? Anyway. <laughs> oh, man, I needed to laugh. I'll tell you later. But anyways, so he... Um, you know, God is love, right? God is love, right? If God is love, right? Not God became love, but God is love. God is love. That means God was, is, and forever is, right? If God is love before man existed, before the birds of the air, beasts of the land, and the fish of the sea existed, before angels existed, because they're a creation of God, who did God love? Himself. Now, that would be crazy, but you love yourself, that's, right? That's kind of weird. But no, God the Father loved God the Son and loved God the Spirit. And the Son loved God the Father, God the Spirit, and the Spirit loves God the Father, God the Son. Remember that God the Son is also God the Word, right? The Word. In the beginning was the Word. Right? Now, why is this important to us? I'm gonna, now, right, here's the practical. This is why it's important for us. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell, uh, tell you guys a truth about us, and um, get ready to say amen, right? Because, man, I try to prep people in, in, in the services, and because this truth hurts, nobody wanted to say amen, all right? And then I was telling the last service, I'm like, you guys get ready to say amen. And there were like four hermanas that were like, amen. I was like, no, I didn't say, I said, get ready. I hadn't said nothing. I'm like, get ready. For all you know, I was going to say, you're going to give me $1,000. And you already said, amen, but pay up, buttercup. No. And so, all right, 
So get ready to say amen, okay? I'm going to give a truth. This truth is going to hurt, but get ready to say amen because it's the truth. We are self-centered. All right, we are. We are self-centered and we are selfish, right? We're self-centered and we are self. We are, right? We are. And it's important that, that we would understand that in the natural, we are self-centered. In the natural, we are selfish. But we're dealing with God, and God is opposite, right? The Father loves the Son and in, in, in the Spirit. The, the Son loves the Father and the Spirit. The Spirit loves the Father and the Son. And if we have God in us, we need to be the same. We need to be loving as well. Let me tell you, like, I, 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 I've been doing a lot of funerals, and, and, I, and, and I do a lot of weddings, when I do a wedding, I try to always say, I always try to tell the man, like uh, the groom, like, hey, you want to win husband of the year? Like next year, you want that award, husband of the year? And, and I'll try and tell the bride, like, hey, you, you want to win wife of the year? Like, like next year, you want me to give you a certificate that says wife of the year? I tell the husband, you need to love your wife. And then I'll tell the wife, you need to love your husband. Right? Jesus says, love thy neighbor as thyself. What does love mean? Love, love's not a feeling like, oh, I feel like it or not. No, no, no. If, if God is commanding us to love our neighbors, then love has to be an action. Love is that we serve others. My dad used to say in Spanish, si no vives para servir, no sirves para vivir. Right? Love means that we serve others. Love means that we, we take an interest in the needs of others and we try and meet the needs of others. Love means sometimes that we even put the needs of others before our own needs. Right? Now imagine a husband that that way, the way I just described it, loves his wife, and the wife loves the husband in the same way. They both love each other, they both serve each other, they both put each other's needs first, they put the other person first. Man, that, that's an amazing marriage. That's, an ama that's a successful marriage. You know, when people ask, like, well, how, well six, how'd you reach 50 years of marriage? Like, man, that's a couple that's going to that's gonna reach, you know, years and years and years of, 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 of a good marriage. But the moment, the moment one of them lets self-centeredness and selfishness creep in, ya bailo, right? Ya bailo. The moment, you know, like the wife is making the huevos rancheros y tortillas de harina y, y lavándole las garras, como decía mi mamá, right? Washing the clothes. And the man is all like, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, I'll, I'll bring the bacon and get this and that and blah, 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 you know, whatever. And, and, and man, pastor, can you do counseling? Que counseling que nada, love each other. That's the counseling. Mm -hmm. Pastor, we need to talk to you. Que talk to me, que nada, serve each other, forgive each other, support each other right there. I'm already giving you what I'm going to tell you in counseling anyways. Just do it. Don't bother me. You know, like that. I mean, think of the family, you know, like the parents and, and the kids. Imagine, you know, like the mom and the dad and the kids. They're all loving each other. They're all serving each other. They're all putting each other's needs first. They're all, like, trying to contribute to the family. Like, man, that's a beautiful family. That's a family in harmony. That's a family that the primo's like, primo, te felicito, man. Congrats, man, primo, your, your family's so beautiful. Like, like, I want my family to be like yours. That's a family that gives a testimony. But the moment, the moment just takes one little selfish punk in the... No, I'm just kidding, right? Little, the moment, the moment, you know, one of the sons or daughters, hombre, ya se pone a todo selfish and egocentric. Oh, man, brings what? disharmony to the family, where the family is trying to contribute to everyone. And this one person, man, just thinks it's all mine, mine. Now, I'm going to share, I'm going to share what, something with you. I didn't share none of the services. Pueblo's Church getting a bonus, right? This is, this is called, uh, you ever heard of dog theology and cat theology? I'm, I'm going to share with y'all, right? Some of y'all, y'all living through cat theology, right? What's cat theology? Cat theology is, you know, you, um, well, let me start with dog theology, all right? Dog theology is where we should be, right? Dog theology, you feed a dog, you give a dog shelter, you give him water, you give him food. If he's sick, you give him medicine. And that dog's like, man, you're amazing. Surely you're God, right? And man, that dog would be faithful to you, follow you, everything, right? But cat theology, cat theology, you feed a cat, you give shelter to a cat, you provide, protect that cat, and that cat's like, man, I'm amazing. I must be a God, right? You know, like... <laughs> And some of y'all living on cat theology instead of dog theology, right? 
The moment one, one in the house begins with cat theology, <laughs> right? Selfishness. No, hombre, hay desarmonía en la casa. I mean, you ever notice that when that one is not in the picture, man, everybody's laughing, having a good time, but no más llegó el primo. Right? Because of, of that self-centeredness, that selfishness. Right? Now, let's even take it further. Let's take it to a church. Right? Give me a church where we love each other. Jesus said, this is how they're going to know you're my disciples, that you would love one another. That we love each other. What does that mean? That we serve each other. That means that sometimes, man, I can't be in service because I'm going to be watching the, the, um, the, the cars so that hermanos can, can feel um, comfortable worshiping or, or I'm going to come to the early service and help so then I can worship in this service or vice versa, whatever, moving, you know, trying to serve. Pastor, what do you need, man? You, the grass looks kind of high. I'm going to go help the hermanos cut the grass, show up randomly. And, and cut. The moment you began to serve, man, that's an amazing church. So when you're one, when you're one, when your lost shows up to a service and they're like, oh man, everybody was so nice and loving and welcoming, that's a church I want to be a part of. But if we are self centered and selfish and it's me, 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 no, hombre, me aguitan, me aguitan. I had a conversation once with a, a friend. He was going to leave the church. He left the church, but before he came to talk to me, at least he came to talk to me before he left. And he says, Pastor, I'm leaving the church. Why are you leaving? He said, well, I don't feel like I'm being fed. I mean, what are you, four years old? You don't know how to go to the fridge, open it, and get something to eat? Like, what do you mean you don't feel like you're being fed? He's like, hey. Others, you know, you know, this is our fourth sanctuary. We moved three times to get here. And every time we moved to a new building, there were people, no, I said, yeah, I don't think that's of God. I, I'm leaving. No, that, that one's too big. I'm leaving, right? Like that. Others, you know, more, more in the Spanish services than in Pueblo's church, but, you know, others like, oh, they don't sing coritos anymore. Man, I like when they sing coritos. And, you know, so I'm going to go find a church where they sing coritos. And then others the opposite. Ah, oh, they sing too many coritos. Ah, man, it's a new, new age, new style, man. We need more uh, up music, you know, too many coritos. And, and uh, you know what all of those excuses, I mean, I can, maybe I'll give you some points if you're like, pastor, it's, it's false doctrine, right? It's not biblical. You're not talking about Jesus. You're talking about yourself, you know, like, like man, pastor, another jet? You bought another? I mean, like, you know, like those type of things, you know. I, maybe I'll give you some points for those things. But I'll, you know what all the other stuff has in common? M-E. It's all me. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I don't like this. I don't prefer, it's all preference. I don't like this, I don't prefer, nah, 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 you know, it, it's all about me, 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 you know? And, and, you know, sometimes we're like that, like me, 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 and, you know, the musicals are like, hey, man, ya cambiale de mi, go too fast, so, la, some other tono, you know, put on me, you know, like, it's all about me, 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 me. That's not the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is not all about me. The Father is about the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Son is not all about me, me, me. He's about the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is all about the Father and the Son, the Word. Right? So love each other. Serve each other. Take an interest in the needs of others. Because if we're a church that we're filled of selfish, self-centered people, there's no way we can glorify Jesus. There's no way that we can glorify Jesus. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start landing this plane. All right, let me, let me land this plane. I know you are hungry. Me too. Right after creation, right after creation, what happened? God created heaven and earth. The earth was dark, formless, void, empty. God said, let there be light. There was light. The light was good. And then what happened? God began to fill the earth, right? Birds of the sea, uh, beasts of the land, fishes of, uh, I'm sorry, birds of, birds of the skies, birds of the seas. They, this is a, you know, I was talking about the penguins. Uh, birds <laughs> and the seagulls, right? Birds of the skies, fish of the sea, thank you. Beasts of the land, plants, trees, de todo. And then Adam and Eve, y vámonos, right? And he gave Adam and Eve one rule, just one. Adam, you love me? You can eat from any tree in the garden. And there, había de todo. I mean, avocado, mango, fresa, whatever you want, man. It was in the garden. Everything was in the garden. You can eat from anything you want. Just do not eat from the tree of wisdom of good and evil. 
Because the day you eat from that tree, surely you will die. Pues que hizo Adam and Eve? As we say in Spanish, lo primero que les dijeron que no hiciera. I mean, the first thing they told them not to do. And Eve goes and grabs from that tree and eats it. And, and the Bible says that she turns and gave it to Adam. I mean, what a... I, when I was a kid, I used to read that story. I always share this. That when I, I used to read that story. I used to think to myself, if I were Adam, well, I'd, Eve's right there disobeying God, disobeying me, because Adam had to tell Eve what was up. Then she grabs from that tree. Man, had she passed, tried to pass that, man, I would have slapped it out of her hand. I would have been like, uh-uh, God, manda me otra, because esta no sirve. You know, like, I mean, I would have been straight up like that. God, send me another one. This girl here, man, like that. But you know what? Every time, every time, I sin. Every time, every time, you sin. Igual a su papá. Just like your dad. Just like Adam. Just like Eve. You eat from that tree. You eat from that tree. Something in us, man. It's like something natural. My youngest, my mother-in-law um, calls her chispita, you know, which means spark. You can imagine how she is. And, um, you know, I, I, she likes to put things in her mouth. Like she'll get a sticker and she puts it in her mouth. She, you know, whatever, man. She just likes to put things in her mouth. And I'm like, no, no. Like, Raquel, no. You know, like I told y'all last week. I'm like, don't make me tell you a third time. We're at the tenth time. We're at 2.8, you know, like just 2.8. Don't make me go to a third, right, like that. And sometimes, sometimes, like, like let's say like she gets this pin top, right? And, I, and the parents, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, also, I could feel her staring at me. Like, she's got some power. Like she, and I look at her, and she, she's, like, standing over here with, with, and she's, like, looking at me, like. <laughs> and I'm, like, Raquel, no. And her smile gets bigger, like. <laughs> I'm, like, no, no, man, give it to me. And I'm like, give it to me. So I'll start walking toward, man, she'll pop it in her mouth and take off. So I'm super scared, right? Like, I'm like chasing her down, trying to stick my finger in her, in her mouth. And she's laughing. She thinks that it's hilarious. And I'm like, and just like your mom, not Nayeli, but just like Eve, man, just like Eve. Like, I don't know what's up with that. The day you eat of this tree, Surely you'll die. When Adam and Eve ate from that tree, immediately they recognized they were naked. They died in their innocence. And then God said, you know what? Get them out of here. Because in the middle of the garden was another tree. It's called the tree of life. And God said, let's not let them eat from the tree of life or they'll be like us, plural, us, and live forever. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's like, sacanos de aquí. And they got them out. They put an angel there so that they couldn't come back in. And then... So they died in their relationship with God the way it was before. And then, years later, they died physically. And that is how death was introduced to us. And right now, we're, we're in a season of death. So many deaths um, happening around us. Um, and it's always hard. It's always difficult. Even with, with our hope that we have in Jesus Christ of eternal life, because we were not created to die. We were created to eat from the tree of life. The day you eat of that tree, the tree of wisdom of good and evil, surely you'll die. Now, I want to tell you, because I was running a parallel with Jesus, that Jesus was told the same thing. The day you eat of that tree, the cross, surely you'll die. Right? And Jesus ate from the cross. Right? The difference is that Adam did it in disobedience. Jesus did it in obedience. Right? And the disobedience of Adam introduced death to us. The Bible says that Jesus was obedient and obedient unto death and death of the cross. The obedience of Jesus introduced death to him so that he could introduce life to us. Right? That's why I take a lot of cons I don't know this correct way to say it, but my heart is console, consoled in the sense when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. Jesus tasted death, died on the cross, so that you and I in him could have a new life, abundant life, and eternal life.
That's amazing. Let's, let's pause right there and let's give the Lord some praise for eternal life through Jesus Christ. So don't, don't be self-centered. Don't be selfish. Love one another. Serve one another. And I'm, I'm going to finish with this. All right. Some describe the relationship between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit they describe it like a dance, that the Father loves the Holy Spirit and the Son, and they all love each other, and they all glorify. Some people describe it as a dance, like, like there's this dance that's going on between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I don't know how to dance. My, when we were kids, no nos llevaban a los quinceañeras, and both, like my mom never took us to any of that, and I never went to, to the clubs and all that, so, so I don't know how to dance, but you know what, man, I love to dance. I'm glad I didn't go, man, because I'd probably still be there, man. I mean, like, like I love to dance, like I do. And, uh, you know, Rebecca and Raquel, they're watching cartoons, and music comes on, and, and I'll start dancing, and I always tell Naeli, I go, man, the kids are going to grow up thinking that their dad's like a great dancer, then they're going to find out that my dad don't know how to dance, you know, like that. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes, like, like, we all get together, Naeli, myself, Rebecca and Raquel, we hold hands, and we're, like, jumping, and we're trolling, and we're dancing, and then the music finishes, and Raquelita will say, mas, right, you know, like, more, she wants another, and we'll put another song, and sometimes we'll videotape and send it to the family, and man, I, I can spend all night looking at a video of us four dancing, laughing, having a good time, seeing their smiles. Let me tell you that there, there's this dance happening between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But many of us, we're not a part of that dance. Instead, we're like that little kid. Sometimes this happens. I talk a lot about my kids because they're at the age that they're not going to complain. Later, they're going to be at an age that they're going to know I'm talking about them, so I won't be able to talk about them anymore because I'm going to hear it when I get home. But sometimes, you know, like Rebecca, like she gets a little, she gets a little attitude. She's, she's three. And, hey, since, since none of my in-laws are here, se le sube el galvan, you know, like, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and she goes, no. And she goes to a corner, right? And she comes to a corner. And, and then she's just, she's just looking at us. She's crying like, ooh. She, like that. She's faking it, right? She's crying, ooh. And she's just looking at us, right? Ooh. And, and she's seeing to see if we look at her. So then we look at her and she'll be like, no, look at me. And like, I bet it on. And so we look away and then she'll start getting, ooh. And she's just like looking at us. And then so finally one of us will go and I'll go, mamas, you know, what, what's, look, you got to be nice to your sister. What, just tell me, what do you want? What do you want? Ooh, you know, like, so man, the show gets even más que le doy, right? You're like, más, you know, the show gets bigger, right? You know, I'm like, look, you want, let's, let's go play, let's go outside. Oh, 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 right? So she gets even mad. So then, you know, we, you just kind of put her to a side, you know, like, okay, you know, fine, be mad, you know, like that. So she's over there. Ooh. Sometimes she's at the, in the room and she's looking at us through the doors. She's like, oh, you like that, right? So, so we'll, put some, we'll put our cartoon on and then the music comes on. And then Nayeli and I will start dancing. So then um, Raquel comes, and so we're dancing, and we're having a good time. And then before we know it, Rebecca is holding our hand as well. And we're, like, dancing and turning and just going in circles and yelling, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And then afterwards, we're all happy, and we hug. And, and it, it's amazing. Like, like it's, it's an amazing time, uh, that time right there in the Villarreal family. I mean, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you that your Heavenly Father, your Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, right now they're, they're, they're dancing. They're loving each other. They're glorifying each other. They're dancing. And, and over the years, their, their children have been coming to them. And, and, they're, and some of you, you're like, you're like over there in the corner. You're, you're just looking. This weekend, man, it's been rough for me. I, I've been ministering last night and today with a super heavy heart. Um, 8 a.m. was really difficult for me to get through because um, a, a friend of ours, Joe Moreno, uh, passed away to, to, to be with the Lord. As, as uh, scripture says of Abraham, he was united to his family. Joe Moreno, um, he, uh, he, he's, he's probably like about seven years older than me, más o menos. Um, he's been part of our church over 30 years, probably over 35 years. Um, he, he actually um, would come to this service, him, his wife, and his sons, they, they sit on my right-hand side um, toward the back. Um, 
And man, that guy was a worker. He was a Sunday school teacher. There's people here that when they were little kids, he was their Sunday school teacher. He, he was a part of the prison ministry. Him and my brother, when they were, you know, like in their teens, early 20s, they would go to Strawberry Park and just, you know, street evangelism, go out there and witness to people. Um, I remember, you know, he had left for a while, came, and um, just, you know, I think it was this year or early last year, I told, late last year, I told Emily, I was like, look, you see that guy? If you ask him to help, he's a worker. He'll help. Next Sunday, man, he was already serving in the parking lot. He would serve in the parking lot, the service before this one, and then come to this service with, with his family. It's, it's, it's been hard for me. Like, he's the last person I thought, like, you know, um, that, I mean, it's just it's still in shock over it. Right before him passing away, another longtime member of our church, Bertin, passed away. And Bertin, those of you who knew Bertin, he had polio when he was younger, so he, um, he had no use of his legs. He, he walked with, um, they're not crutches, but um, what, what do you call that? Um, I guess like crutches, right? And, um, you know, I, what, I, what I'm going to say right now, I just believe with all my heart that when Bertin and Joe, when, when, when they made it to heaven, right, they heard these words, right? The words that we read in Mark chapter 1, verse 11. You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. I mean, I just really believe that. I believe that my Heavenly Father received them the way the Father received the prodigal son. But these weren't prodigal sons. These were servants, slaves of Jesus. Right? And, 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 and as I was preparing for this message and, 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 and thinking of the dance between the Father and the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and thinking of how Nayeli and I, we dance with our girls, I was just, I was just um, a part of me sees it. Like, I can see... Uh, first of all, a good friend of mine, Romulo, uh, he passed away some years ago, and he was a young man from our church. And, um, like I, I, he, and he always, like, did this and would, like, kind of, like, giggle. Like, <laughs> and I can imagine when Bertin showed up and when Joe showed up, Romulo was waiting for them, like, <laughs> you know. And then, man, I can just see it clear as day of Romulo and Joe laughing as Bertin joins the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, dancing. You don't have to be on the outside. You can be on the inside. You know, I, I, I know with all my heart where Bertin Gonzalez is at. I know with all of my heart that when Joe Moreno closed his eyes to this world, in an instant, immediately, he opened them in the presence of his Lord. Because Jesus was his Christ. Jesus was his Messiah. He uh, recognized Jesus as the Son of God. And Jesus was his Lord. But what about you? What about you? If anything, we've learned this last year and a half, two years, is that life is short and we are fragile. We are fragile. I was at a funeral and um, the guy uh, um, that was ministering, he, he was like, tomorrow's not promised. He, he's like, tomorrow's not guaranteed. He's, and, and then he, he, I, I think he misspoke, and he goes, today's guaranteed. And the first thing that pops in my head was like, no, today's not even guaranteed. It's not even guaranteed we will finish the day. Right? One day we will all face death. The Bible says, for every man it is appointed to die once, and then the judgment. And in an instant, you will either be in the presence of the Lord, a part of that dance, or you will be, for eternity, absent of that presence. Let's close our Bibles, and I'm going to invite you to bow your head, close your eyes. I don't want, I'm, I'm not here to force anything on anybody, but where do you want to end up when that day comes for you? Don't you want to walk out of here this afternoon with that confidence, that assurance in your heart? That like my good friend Joe, when your eyes close to this world, your eyes are going to open in the presence of the Lord. Don't you want that confidence? Don't you want that assurance? You're here for a reason. I know you came. Well, somebody invited me. Well, I'm coming to presentation. I'm coming to this or that. No, no. You're here for a reason. You're here to hear what God had to say to you. And this is your opportunity to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God.
If there's anyone this afternoon that says, you know, Pastor, I need Jesus. I don't care if this is your fifth time, your tenth time to do this. You know, deep down in you, something's missing in my life. I need Jesus. There's someone today that says, Pastor, I don't want to be over there in a corner looking at Jesus and his children in a good relationship. I want to be a part of that relationship. I want to dance with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you, will you just raise your hand? You can raise your hand and then put it down. I see you. God bless you. God bless you here on my left. I see several in the middle. God bless you. Several on my right. God bless you. God is with you. May the Lord strengthen you. All right. God bless you in the very back. May the Lord strengthen you. Let's take this moment and, and let's all pray together. Let's confess together. Repeat this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I thank you that I came to church today. And I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Lord. He is your son. And I believe with all my heart that he died on the cross and was buried. And three days later, you resurrected him. And because I confess and believe this, you promised me a new life, abundant life, eternal life, salvation. Help me to live for you, to love you, to live for my brothers, my neighbors, and to love them, to serve you, by serving others, that I would find fulfillment in my life and purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.